This fantasy football preview edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by Win Bet. Win Bet is now live in Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, and Virginia. For boosted parlays to in-game odds on every major sport, Win Bet has what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a five hundred dollar risk-free sports bet. Download the Win Bet app now, or visit wynnbet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap. America's number one app to buy and sell sports bets. Use promo code SGP on your first deposit and receive up to five hundred dollars in bonus cash. That's PropSwap.com promo code SGP. We're also brought to you by Pixwise. Pixwise is the number one home of free sports betting picks. Visit Pixwise.com to make your next bet better. We're also brought to you by Odds Crowd. Are you the best football better in the United States? Odds Crowd challenges you to prove it with their free-to-play fantasy betting contest. Over thirty thousand dollars up for grabs over the season. Go to oddscrowd.com to sign up, and of course, don't forget to download the SGPN app. SGPN is giving you a chance to win one hundred thousand dollars NFL Week One exclusively on the SGPN app. Ooh, welcome everyone to the Sports Game on Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green ones. My partner in picks, Ryan, Real Money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Bringing the heat, bringing the heat, bringing the heat for a little football. You know, it was almost a month ago, Sean, and I. Yeah. I told a, a story to the listeners. I said, you know what? From this day forward, I, I declare we will only talk about the sport of football. We have continued to only talk about the sport of football. Holy! And you know what's scary, Sean? The real drafts are here. Yeah, that, we got a. We got a uh, big money draft on Monday. Literally, I have uh, in the next week t- to ten days. I have we're we're gonna call it five figures of fantasy football <laughs> drafts, <laughs> including uh, the ETH league, baby. Yeah, uh, we're doing a we're doing a league where the entry fee is one ETH. So <laughs> look out, <laughs> Kramer. Kramer had to have a conversation with me before <laughs> he goes. Okay, we're doing the league, but no Homer bullshit. All right, <laughs> we're drafting guys who we think we should draft. And then in my head, I'm like, well, I'm going to advocate for some Eagles rocking the Devonta Smith Jersey. Kramer forgot to uh, bring his Kadarius Tony Jersey in. We're going to, we've been covering I don't just gift you respect, bro. We, we, we're going to earn it. We've been hitting on a uh, fantasy Kadarius football Tony on the field though today. <laughs> Let's go all rise, baby. Finally getting some preseason work. We've been hitting fantasy football hard all off season. Tons of great stuff up uh, over at the website or on the app. And uh, we've we've already cranked out a bunch of fantasy football episodes, but we felt this would be a good time to kind of do a maybe if you're just hopping in, you're a late comer. I, I would check out some of the best ball draft episodes, a bunch of good nuggets there. But we're gonna go round by round and kind of give out who our ideal candidate would be in that round. Uh, before we get to that, though, let's let's talk. Oh, you hear those trumpets? That means the football trumpets. They're blaring the sound. It means football gambling is here. NFL week one. There is no more preseason. This is, we are counting it down to the regular season. Get a nice, juicy two week regular season countdown. Fire up that Win Bet app now. Download it in the App Store. Just go to winbet.com. So many states are live. I know Arizona right around the corner. So if you're in Arizona, stay tuned or head over to winbet.com. Check them out. Get a head start. Oh man. And they got it all. Win totals, player props, in-game wagering, college football, of course, and the best part, a five hundred dollar risk free sports bet. AKA a football bet. Let's fucking go. Win bet to W I N B I G. Joining us on the line, editor of our uh, fantasy football editor for the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, the Don of Bills Mafia, Adam Pelletier. Adam, it's time. Do you feel those? You feel those football juices happening? <laughs> oh yeah, I definitely do. It's that time of year. I started to feel the vibes going a couple of weeks ago when I went to our high school's first game, not against Bishop Sermon or <laughs> yeah, Sycamore. Bishop Sycamore. Unfortunately, <laughs> that would have been great. But um, no, I'm amped now. Got three or four drafts this week. Just absolutely psyched for everything. And sitting here with like three tabs open with different leagues in them, waiting for Rashad Bateman to be put on IR <laughs> on sleeper so I can stash him. And make a move. <laughs> That's uh, and 
It's interesting. Kramer and I have been doing a little touting. Obviously, we're big on Jamal Williams. We said Rodgers would stay in Green Bay. Kramer gave you Gus Edwards. We said James Winston was the starter. We said Cam Newton, uh, not a starting quarterback. McCorkle in has a chance for a uh, rookie of the year. Now, Adam, uh, it's early, and some of it's injury related. Some of it's just workload production. But what is one early season lean? Because we've been talking fantasy feels like for four or five months, but uh, what's, what's like an early take you had that you feel great about so far? Uh, one that I really feel good about, and I'm going to stand by it is Donald Parham's going to finish this year as a top 15 tight Ooh. end. And you're going to get him free at the end of your draft. Like I've been I, in my home league that I've been prepping for, I'm going to probably end up taking him in the 12th round solely because of our keeper rules has me James Robinson and chase Claypool in rounds 13 and 14. But I think that's a huge opportunity to go defense early and get a premium defense, a premium kicker, and then just lock your tight end down at the end of the draft. He was split out wide all preseason. He's a guy you're watching. Who's going to have a big role there in LA. Well, that's the advantage of knowing your shit and talking yep. fantasy all summer. You alluded to us talking about fantasy, doing a quote bunch of drafts, uh, <laughs> calmly didn't, didn't patted yourself play. on the back on the account. <laughs> didn't mention the 24 hour uh, marathon. Catch a, up on that. If Sean, you, if a you bunch. Go into you, you go to the store and you buy a bunch of bananas. All right, those bananas aren't lasting you 24 <laughs> hours straight. <laughs> Ryan did the funniest part. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of funny parts. Immediately had Gus Edwards or Jamal Williams on every single one of those teams, by the way. <laughs> Huge Love shares. It. Now, right after the 24 hour draft ended, I'm talking to Kramer. I go, Are you are you all right? Do you need should I drive you home? Is your brain delirious from fantasy? This is twenty five minutes later. I hear his phone go off and it's an alert and he opens it up. He goes, I'm on the clock for this FFPC slow draft. I'll get back to you. <laughs> what? Well, I mean, he's still in on the draft it's a fucking lifestyle. Sean. It's great. And, and kind of coming back to the Donald Parham point, I, I, I keep, as we've been doing these, especially in the managed leagues, getting that Kelsey or Waller again, especially in best ball, I've been doing that. And then you don't need a third tight end. You can just have that second tight end and Donald Parham again, completely free in like an underdog well, best ball draft. So if you have Kelsey Waller and you have Donald Parham, I think you're good for the season. And specifically like in the managed leagues that everyone's drafting this weekend, what Adam pointed out there is, is a nice sharp edge. If you know what you're doing and you're drafting all these players, the point, what I, the, the point I was getting to was you can stow that guy that you know, you can get in the 18th round, which lets you take your defense around early, yeah. which means you're taking a kicker around early, which means you're probably getting, you know, whatever edge you can find there. Young uh, way coo. Whatever Atlanta you know, kicker. lots of domes, whatever whatever, whatever you fancy. Uh, but but it lets you get one of those free guys at the end because, you know, like Adam's saying, especially in a home league where there's probably gonna be uh because the tight end conversation is interesting, right? It's very top heavy, but after that it really doesn't matter. So maybe you can do something like grab parm. If it fails, you'll probably be able to find someone that's serviceable. Yeah. Now, no. like Mo Ali Cox is going to score some touchdowns. He's going to pop Long. up when you, Cox. he gets the play. Think about Mo Ali. He's going to play the Texans and the Jags, two defenses that are dog shit. You're going to, anyway. We're going to, so we're going to hit on uh, some fantasy football news and then we're going to go through round by round, kind of highlighting maybe a perfect draft or some of our, our favorite guys in that round. I guess not a, a perfect draft, but, but basically guys we like in that range. Before we get to that, breaking news. Oh, well, first off, you got to download the uh, SGPN app, get your picks in for NFL week one, your chance to win $100,000 for a uh, perfect score in our picks contest. And we got. Uh, partnering up with the Odds Crowd for the free roll football oh. contest, they're putting up ten grand for uh, their season long NFL contest. We are branding this, partnering up with them for the free roll football contest. Get your uh, entries in, and because it's on Odds Crowd, pretty fun. You can select the different uh, spreads. So if you want to bet it at, it, it's a unit based competition, Ryan. Oh, so wow. <laughs> you can go from one to three units on your picks. Totals are uh, in the mix. As well, and uh, they have all the different point spreads. So maybe, uh, maybe you see uh, Pittsburgh Bills week one, 
Everyone has it at seven, but you can get it at like minus six, minus one twenty, assuming uh, assuming you like the bills there. Again, you got to check out oddscrowd.com. Go there, sign up for the contest, and we're gonna have weekly SGPN exclusive uh, contests as well, giving out a hundred bucks a week for those. They're separate from the season long, so make sure you get in on the season long and, and download the app or just go to oddscrowd.com. And before you ask. If you bet more, you also lose more. You can go in the yes. red. So it's like it's like a real betting contest. Yeah. And I I'm sure people are gonna be confused by this. You may well, remember it's the same uh, company we worked with in March Madness. Yes. And as you remember, I got second place and won twenty five hundred dollars. Who could forget? Should have, should have hedged. Uh, but it was it was kind of like a bitch move because I saw what the other guy picked. Yeah. That's so a bitch I, move. I I I I you know I left twenty five hundred dollars on the table out of pride. Uh, but uh, nice cash there. Okay, fantasy news. We hit on uh, Cam Newton being benched, aka or sorry, cut, and and McCorkle being the starter. Probably didn't change much your thoughts on the quarterback position. However, Cam Newton, nineteen touches inside the five yard line. Uh, it, it, I think it, the the Patriots backfield, and then they trade Sony Michelle. Adam, I'll let you go here. What are you doing with Sony Michelle? Uh, and what are you doing with the Patriots backfield? How are you moving these guys up a bunch or, or what are you doing? So I'm not really that in on Sonny Michelle right now, maybe taking him in the late rounds, that late round flyer that you're looking at. It really sounds like they want Daryl Henderson to be their guy moving forward. And as we're looking at the Patriots, this definitely means you got to fire up some Damian Harris. Yeah. It seems like he's in line to just have a massive workload. James white will get his touches through the air, but this means Damian Harris could see those goal line touches that really prevented him from ascending to a higher level last year. So all in on Damian Harris, looking at him, um, I actually got him slotted a lot earlier in like round slot. seven, six, seven, eight in there. So like in that. Yeah. And, and he, and, yeah. He was a guy that all summer in the best ball drafts, we were, if you were doing, you know, RB zero, <laughs> you were grabbing him in the ninth round and it, it didn't really make sense at the time. Obviously it's easier to w- talk yourself into it. I also, I mean, for me, the bigger upgrade was the biggest of the upgrades was James white. Yeah. Uh, I already Har- Harris was already in a decent spot. I still don't think I'm drafting him before even the, the seventh round. I, I, I don't love it all that much. I do like James and White Stevenson getting, is a, is a wild card. Cause he's, he looks like a, a right, goddamn beast. It is Belichick still. Yeah. And so you have to, but I do like the fact that white is going to turn into the, the, the safety blanket for, for McCorkle. Yeah. And, and you know, the rookie quarterback loves to check down. I could see them giving him some easy, easy, uh, easy little outs there with James white and, and with Sony Michelle, it may be a slight bump up for Sony Michelle, but certainly a slight knockdown on, on Daryl Henderson. The fact that they uh, went out of their way, I mean, they're going to lose a fourth round pick. So I, I think they made it clear that I wasn't super high on Daryl Henderson. I'm going to knock him down a little bit because they, they're showing you that they're not a hundred percent in on him. downgrading Cam Newton a lot though. Yeah. I'm not that I I'm neck and neck between Cam Newton wow. and Carson Wentz on the bottom uh, of my uh, fantasy uh, pros rankings. Yeah. I've uh, upgraded Sham Newton though. and and Adam, I did get a warning uh, from fantasy <laughs> pros when I submitted my rankings. They're like, you are dangerously off the market on Omari Cooper. Do you want to adjust this? I'm like, fuck no. <laughs> We're, we're I do. I, I like, I live for those emails <laughs> that I get occasionally when it's just like, you have this guy still ranked and he's injured. I'm like, yeah, but he could come back. Yeah. Um, but Daryl Henderson, that's a guy where if I'm in a league, I'm starting to make calls to people and find out how they're thinking about him because right now he's one of the widest spreads in our SGPN ranks. I've got him at 19 and I'm highest. I think Sean is lowest on him at 36. And a lot of folks have him in that high twenties, low thirties. There are and then there's me who's going to be right when he finishes <laughs> as like RB 18. And, and, gonna... and, and maybe that is, uh, that is the case. I, I guess I'm just, and we've certainly seen Sean McVay, you, you know, really get the most out of some running backs. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm just, I don't know. They, they brought in cam Akers for, they drafted cam Akers for a reason. They brought in Sony Michelle for a reason. I, I just don't think they're in love with Henderson. The objective take here is that he has a huge ceiling, but he also had now has a guy who's probably going to steal goal line touches at nothing else. Yeah. And, and that might, that might eat into his overall production. Interesting news too. This is uh, uh, as we're kind of cutting down the rosters, 
before we hopped on the call, you pointed out that John Brown had had gotten cut. I've kind of quietly been higher, I think, than most. And it, again, this is kind of something that's happened over the course of the offseason on Henry Ruggs. Again, not super high, but I think he is valuable where he's getting drafted. I think Gruden just has to get something out of him. So I think they're going to go out of their way to target him. You got nine, you know, home games in a dome. You have a defense that has a lot of question marks. And we saw some flashes again. He was the first receiver taken, maybe overdrafted. But Ryan, you were saying uh, a lot of these rookie receivers, maybe giving them a pass, maybe they have a better second year. I, I think Henry Ruggs, no one's talking about him. And I think you can get him at a decent spot. Where am I crazy? Because you, you're talking yourself into the fact that his bust, that he's not a bust when he looks like a bust. He walks like a bust. He talks like a bust. Yeah, I, he's in I a guess, bust environment. I guess just where he's getting drafted, but it seems like here's the, the it's worth the risk. You could argue the Raiders are one of those teams that if they perform like they did last year, which I think many people feel the offense should regress, but if they perform like they did last year, you could argue every single one of their players is going to outperform their ADP. Every single one of them, because Josh Jacobs will just based on scoring touchdown. Waller, if he gets thirty three percent target share again, no big deal. Edwards and Rugs, they're gonna have to catch some passes. Derek Carr, of yeah. course, he's going. No Aguilar. And, Carr's going like what twenty eighth in quarterbacks. <laughs> it's like crazy. So and and, and people don't but, like uh, Carr, but his numbers end up being decent. So I went back and looked, and an underdog, I I have a strangely high uh, ownership of Edwards. Hmm. Which I like now. I like. I mean, he was the ultimate like training camp muscle guy picture. Uh, again, if he's a possession guy, Derek Carr is a possession a quarterback, and 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 he likes throwing the Waller for that reason. So maybe he can fall in love with another guy like that. I just for me, sure, best ball rugs is fun, but again, I think he kind of he kind of resembles the prototypical first round bust. So I'm gonna I'm staying away. I think. Adam. The thing to remember is last year he was Ruggs was really banged up a lot of the year. He missed some time. They were going to Aguilar a lot. They were working Hunter Renfro out of the slot. You take Nelson Aguilar's 82 targets away. You give half of those to Ruggs and he's at 90 targets right there. You know, you take a few off of Darren Waller because you probably don't want to go to your tight end 145 times again. So <laughs> he's up there. He's up there. And right there, you got Henry Ruggs right around a thousand yards on the season with his big play potential. I mean, he had a better catch percentage last year than Aguilar because we, he out here catching stuff. Unlike Aguilar, <laughs> um, that guy's the you know, Aguilar had a sub 60 catch percentage last year with 82 targets. And that's scarily low for the top receiver on that team. Henry Ruggs with a year in is he's going free in most drafts, ADP of 131 overall, wide receiver 52. If I'm in a managed league, I am looking at rugs starting in the double digit rounds right around round 10. Because well, yeah, it gives you he's the a upside. guy, he's a guy whose ADP is just going to keep declining. And the same thing with Brian Edwards, because I think they're going to want to go to guys who can do more with the ball in their hands than Hunter Renfro. I'd look for Hunter Renfro to take that step back from his 77 targets last year. Especially because Edwards was hurt for a lot of last year as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I again, I think, I I think they're gonna, I think it's a team that's probably gonna outperform their ADP, especially for the cheap receivers. Seven, fourteen percent ownership with Edwards, zero percent rugs in my and, best. And Henry ball, Ruggs, which is, is probably I need to get a little balance. His his receiving yards for player props, it's sitting at seven twenty five and a half, which I I just think they're gonna end up having to throw a decent amount and. Uh, it just seems like he's going to be the guy uh, that ends up getting some of these some Ra of these missing targets. These Raider Raider fans love us right now. <laughs> we got to get our shit full Raiders out. segment. <laughs> well, Adam, you are uh, you're a Bills expert. What's what's uh what's going on with the Bills and the tight end? I I I kept thinking the Eagles were going to trade Ertz to Buffalo, but now it seems like from the recent press conference, it seems like Ertz is going to stay. At least until the trade deadline, what did what did the Bills end up doing in uh, tight end? Now, of course, Irv Smith out for the season in Minnesota. Then they traded for uh, Herndon. What the Herndon? Fuck? Which I didn't see that coming. That was surprising. Dead man walk. And, and supposedly the Eagles shopped Goddard to them. I think they just were rolling the dice, seeing what kind of like crazy. Apparently, the asking price was crazy. But uh, you know, maybe they thought they could get that same uh, same deal they got no. for Sam Bradford years ago. But 
Um, what, what are the Bills going to do tight end? It seemed like we're getting a little tight end movement here, but maybe the Eagles do stick it out with Goddard and Ertz. I was all in on Goddard early, assuming Ertz was going to be out, but now as we go along, I have to kind of move up Ertz and move down Goddard. But what about the Bills? Uh, Gabe Davis is going to run tie down routes when they're out <laughs> in the middle of the field. And when they get close to the goal line, it seems like they really want to get Reggie Gilliam involved. Um, he was their fullback. He's their third string tight end, but they got him involved a lot around the goal line during the preseason. I was talking to one of my friends today. And I think that when the bills get down around the goal line, you're going to see Josh Allen under center in the pistol, in the gun with Reggie Gilliam on one side and Zach Moss right mm-hmm. there too. And defenses are going to have a fit trying to do that. If you're trying to be cute at the end of a draft and you want to build tight end, Reggie Gilliam should have tight end eligibility <laughs> on most, on most sites. And I'd go with him. Um, other than that, I want nothing to do with Dawson Knox until I see the off season video of him eating, sleeping and drinking a jugs machine. Cause the man, you want to talk about stone hands. He makes Evan Ingram's hands look silky smooth. So yeah, I don't I think mean, there's going to be much you would there. Think, you would think in that pass happy bills offense that uh, a tight end would be able to eat, but they just haven't been able to figure it out and seem well, comfortable. They haven't running. had a consistent one. Yeah. They haven't had a consistent one. Dawson Knox isn't a good blocker. They Lee Smith had six targets last year, two touchdowns, and he was their blocking tight end. And Tyler Croft came in for 16 and three. So there's a lot of touchdowns that they end up catching, but that's more just a nature of the play action. They run around the goal line. Um, I'm not really in on any bills tight end. I'm avoiding a bills tight end like the plague because you're hoping they catch a touchdown. Maybe if you're in best ball, you throw a dart at Reggie Gilliam and you go from there. Put him in your uh, Millie maker week one. I mean, yeah, that's certainly how you win a million. <laughs> Three thousand uh, dollar tight two, end, two touchdowns, right? Yeah, twenty five hundred maybe even. Oh yeah, you're right because tight ends even lower. Yeah, that's actually uh, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna start working <laughs> on my builds because I am gonna do. I, I did it last year. It was really fun putting together thirty two million maker lineups, one for each uh, team, and one I guess you no know, Thursday night 30. or. Or maybe twenty eight because the on Monday night there's only one ends, Monday night game. Outs. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to whatever the max number of quarterbacks I'll have one for each quarterback. One that's certainly gonna be tough to put together is my Texans one. Uh, Tyrod Taylor seems to be the starting quarterback now by default because it, it's the Texans aren't gonna play. Ty, uh, you know Deshaun again. There's a, it's what like seven eight days before the season starts. I think you stack him with Cooks. Don't overthink it. Yeah, yeah, and and Cooks no concussion. Maybe he has. I mean, that Jag secondary was really, really. Maybe you double stack bad. Nico. Throw him out there. Yeah, that could be. Yeah, fun. that's a nice. That's a nice lineup. Nico Collins looks like the guy they let Kiki Cootie walk. Yeah, in free that was an, that was another one. I was pretty sur- Sorry. Yeah, that was another kind of surprise. Why? Why? I mean, you have a young team. You're just looking to see what you got out of guys. Why would you not keep? Kiki Kuti, and, and maybe I didn't follow it enough, but he seemed like a guy that occasionally had some good games. Young guy, I, I don't know why you wouldn't want him. Just see what you got there with Kuti. The new coach really was having a hard time saying his name, so <laughs> just don't want to make it. I, I mean, it, it it seems like a regime move. Like he's not a guy who's necessarily moving the bar for him a ton. So why are they going to stick with him? Um, and Tyrod is going to be an interesting candidate. Is going to be an interesting guy this year because this team is going to be behind a lot. Yeah, and everybody forgets that when he was with the Bills, they didn't have him throw a ton, but he was pretty good. He had three thousand yards in two of his three seasons, and in the third season, that was where they had more Nate Peterman going on. They decided he oh, would man, the, be an the actual infamous thing. Uh, five interception game. Well, and then also when Tyrod was playing with Buffalo, they had a better defense. So yep. he he was just going out there and playing an efficient, clean game, getting them to the playoffs. But now he, it's going to be an interesting thing because he's not normally a chucker. But when you're down 28 points, you're going to throw the ball a ton. It, it, that'll be interesting if Tyrod ends up for being those, fantasy yeah, for relevant. For those who didn't know, he was an elite 11 quarterback. So he's, I mean, according to Ryan, the best Virginia Tech quarterback he's ever seen, including <laughs> Michael Vick. I, no, and, I, I, I would say over the course of his career, yes, he brought okay. more to the program than Michael Vick. And, and the other thing to remember is, is if you're in a managed league or somewhere where you're a best ball, even he'd be a real interesting play because he's going to get touchdowns and he doesn't throw interceptions. The man has never had a double digit interception season. And there are not a lot of quarterbacks that can say that to their name. So even if he's chucking the ball, 
He has a route runner like Brandon cooks, who is his kind of receiver. Tyrod Taylor's at his best when he's getting outside the pocket and he's waiting for that guy to run open and he throws it to him deep. I mean, that Sammy Watkins connection he had was elite Sammy Watkins rookie year. And the only reason we were going to fully see it blossom was because the bills traded Sammy Watkins. So if you're late in a draft and you don't have, and you pick up like a Jalen and you drafted like a Jalen hurts, throw Tyrod Taylor on there. You know, he's a, he's a guy you should be targeting late as that safe play with a young rookie, like Justin Fields or Trevor Lawrence or somebody like that who could get hurt, who could get yanked, you know, Not guys start, like that yeah. back better. All right. Here's the, here's the question. More rushing yards this year. Trey Lance, Tyrod Taylor. <laughs> Has Tyrod ever been much of a rusher? Oh yeah. I mean, I think on this team, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to get some rushing yards, rushing floor, rushing floor. He's going to get some yards there. And so everything would it blow your mind if we finished the year and Tyrod's a top 15. Fantasy well, program. yeah, I'm looking at, I didn't realize he had like 580 one year with the bills at six touchdowns it, every it, year. But that last year he was over 500 yards rushing. He's a yeah. guy who's going to take the ball and defenses are going to be keying on Philip Lindsay, Mark Ingram down along the goal line, Tyrod Taylor. Well, also you know, again, let's say they're down 21 points. Defenses sit back in a prevent mm-hmm. it's third and 10. It's easy to just tuck it run slide, get the first down and just kind of rack up some uh, fantasy points there. We've spent a comical you amount remember, of time talking yeah. to Houston Texans. You remember fans. his nickname, right? Sean team. Oh, Ty baby. God. Oh, T-Mobile. T-Mobile. you're there right. You go. Let's go. Oh, All right. I, I thought it was Ty goat. Ty goat. <laughs> All right. Let's get to our, uh, our, our round by round uh, best players here. Of course, we're brought to you by prop swap. Check out the new and uh, better than ever prop swap.com packed with tons of new features, including filtering tickets based on value to find the best odds. Again, that's, what's so good about uh prop swap, whether you're buying or selling your cut, you're getting the best price. Uh, you can see the activity feed, see what's happening there. Loyalty rewards program. Oh, yes, please. Yes. Selling a bunch. You get extra cash. Again, if you love sports betting, which you obviously you do, you need to be on prop swap. Best part is you don't need to win in order to make money. You just need the odds to improve. Make sure you go for two, get yourself two tickets. When you have the sports book, one to sell in the marketplace and one. So, uh, you know, you get a little sweat. Hashtag Dejans only. Get started today. Head over to PropSwap.com or download the PropSwap app. PropSwap, it's where America goes to buy and sell sports bets. Round one, Kramer. Who are you looking to target? Uh, well, I mean, I guess this is one of those things where if you're in the first pick, you're probably yeah, taking. Yeah, and and round so, one, I I kind of did two guys because it's a little different conversation. Uh, so I'll say this: early, late, Cook and McCaffrey are pretty consensus one two. So I would say if I have a pick after that, it's either like in the three to 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 eight range, it's Kelsey or it's Barkley for me. Mm. And I'm ignoring all the the hate flowing from Sean and the others. Barkley is going. You see the immense amount of uh, activity. He's Garrett wants to run the ball. He's going to be used, and he's going to bat right back to that 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 kind of check down. He's going to have three, four, five catches minimum per game. So, and, and, or Kelsey, and those are the two guys where I'm I'm totally stoked. You know, a third guy I wrote down because I wanted to one up you would be like if I am drafting later in the round, taking a guy like Devontae Adams is fun for mm. me. Because I do think these elite pass catchers are a bit, uh, much like Kelsey, a bit above, maybe even tier two. So that would be how I do it: middle, early, late. Yeah. What are you What are you looking at round one? Who is your What's your dream uh, pick in round one, Adam? I mean, early. If I got the number one pick, it's Dalvin Cook. Yeah. Not even a question. Go. But then, if I'm picks five or beyond, I'm locking in on Stefan Diggs and Austin Eckler, and yep. I'm just going with one of those two guys. Um, Austin Eckler is presently my overall number seven player um, and RB uh, RB five. Um, he's just a guy who's been consistent. He's never had the full workload. He's never had the trust of the coaching staff. And it sounds like he has that this year. He's going to put up Alvin Kamara ask numbers in an offense where he is the number two weapon behind Keenan Allen. Yeah. And, and Stefan Diggs is Stefan Diggs. Yeah. And Diggs is. <laughs> He's the man. I, I don't see them slowing down. If you're late, I, I agree. Stefan Diggs is kind of my guy. Uh, although, I mean, I'm not really going to shit on Devonte Adams. That's that's a fun play as well. I'm I'm with you, Kramer. That Kelsey, if you're in the middle there, just the fact that there's really 
two tight ends. And the fact that you're only able to start one tight end, it's Kelsey and Waller. And then the middle to me is so wide with the rest of the guys. And then there's so many other deep options. I, I think it is kind of worth uh, taking a crack at Kelsey. And I actually had Austin Eckler as my round two guy. Cause a lot of places have him as like a high round two. So I think, I think you can, especially if you're at the 10, 11, 12 spot, you can easily get digs and I would get digs first and then get Eckler early second. So Eckler is my round two guy. I mean, Kramer, you've been all over Eckler. I, I, I hundred catch potential. Baby. I, I, I'm with you. I think he could easily hit a, a hundred catches and I know a lot Herbert's great down the field, but I mean, you know, I, and also I just love how Austin Eckler is embracing the fantasy community it, it, doing all these promos where yeah. it's like, draft me. You're not going to get disappointed. I, I like that. The guy knows that He's, it's a PPR league. He's leaning <laughs> into it. I appreciate that. What do you got uh, uh, round two, Kramer? Yeah. I mean, just to pile on Eckler uh, 22% uh, in, in best ball. And uh, yeah, I, I just think I put him at my four, number four guy way back in the summer, Sean. Mm. So uh, I was uh, I was ahead of market. Uh, yeah, I, I guess you know Diggs is a guy who I I noted for round two because he's in some he's fallen, but I'll I'll scratch that off since we already talked about him, and I'll just say Calvin Ridley, uh, round two. If to me like there's two guys in round two that are consistently available in round two that have just. Uh, complete number one potential, and it's Calvin Ridley and DK Metcalf. And so, if I can uh, get those guys pretty much at anywhere, uh, the only place I'm maybe not targeting a Ridley or a Metcalf is if I've somehow gotten lucky and it was able to do a Barkley Eckler mm. uh, around the turn, uh, which got. God help me if I'm able to do that in the FFPC main event, get get Barkley in the second round or something silly like that. But yeah, for me, it's it's Ridley, it's Metcalf. Like these guys have true number one, number one overall, first round type guy uh, potential from this position. So, what about you, Adam? Second round, who, who's uh, what would be the perfect Adam uh, Pelletier second round pick? Did we lose Adam? Oh, there he is. All right, you 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 froze for a second there. Hold on. Are you good? Can we hear you? Can't hear you. Test. There, there we go. go. There you go. All right, I'll just pick it up. What about you, Adam? What is the uh, dream second round pick? Uh, Ridley, if he makes it there, I don't think he's going to make it there to the middle of the second round quite often. I think he's going to go right around that turn. Um, but it's definitely Darren Waller for me. Mm. Um, that's just a massive positional advantage. You have to go with that. It's kind of becoming the norm that you have to, if you want to win, you got to get a top tight end. You have to have a top five tight end. And Waller and Kelsey just give you such a high upside that you cannot pass it up. I mean, they're giving you wide receiver production in a lot of weeks from the tight end slot. And that's just gives you a massive advantage and going to win you leagues. That 33% target share is just crazy. It's insane. Has. And it's juicy. And it's how, juicy, is it, man. how is it going to go? It'll probably go down a little bit, but I, I, how, Di- I how would he you, not be involved? Dick Olson and I will, if he's there at six in the main event, in the first FFPC. In, in the first round where Again, one, one, one and, and a half. half one and a half points per reception but For you know probably end. equivalent of a second round pick to what Adam's saying we're going to take him at 6 so yeah yeah and just remember with Saquon Barkley the other thing you do got to remember just not saying you're not taking him in the first round but he is there is a potential he misses multiple weeks at the start of the season no. yes so if you take do, him no. early you're going to have to have a backup plan and you could lose two weeks early. If you think he can make it back at full strength, I'm Kramer. You're shaking your head, but coming back from an ACL, that's tough. We and can get Sebastian on here and he's going to back me up. Yes. We will be talking injuries uh, later with our own SGPN football doc. We got an injury doc guy. It's uh, awesome. I, I hope I'm drafting with 11 Adams so I can get Saquon in the second round. Yes, please. I mean, uh, uh, again, I think Saquon in the first That's round. That's fine. You'll go zero and twelve. Well, well, let me ask you this: you're then. Playing before we, with eleven Adams, before we move, when when would you take him? At what point do you take him? Adam? Uh, if he fall, if he's in this, if he's there in the middle of the second round, I'm looking at him. But okay. looking at guys, I'd rather have. I'd rather have you know Stefan Diggs, DeAndre Hopkins. Um, I'd rather have Alvin Kamara. I'd rather have Aaron Jones. Yep. Um, you know, just a lot. mess of guys that I'd rather have before I'm touching Saquon. <laughs> a lot Barkley. of wrong answers there. All right, Sean. Round three. 
Uh, this again, maybe not huge in the pass catching role, but David Montgomery. I, I think the the Bears just need this guy. I, I like the way he runs. I think he's gonna have tremendous volume. Nagy seems like a pretty straightforward guy. I mean, he he basically promised Andy Dalton that he would be the starting quarterback, in spite of the fact that Justin Fields looks better in preseason. He's still going with uh, Andy Dalton. So the guy seems he seems like a coach that shoots you straight. He's <laughs> he told everyone Montgomery's going to get twenty five plus uh, touches a game. Why would you not want that in the third round? Twenty five touches a game. It's a volume game fantasy football. David Montgomery, let's go. Yeah, uh, tough for me to argue there. I did. You know, we took a long shot stab at him. Thirty to, to one the, for most rushing the, yards. The rushing title. He he certainly should get the volume. Uh, for me, it's easy. It's Keenan Allen. Mm. Uh, the fact that he's in yeah, the third not round. even a question. Yeah, third round. Just the 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 target floor. Forget about where his target ceiling could be. Offense should be good. Sure, there's there's other mouths to feed, and maybe he's not the first target around the red zone. But you know, how many guys in the league can legitimately get? 12 50, I mean what what are you what are we projecting his targets Adam through the roof yeah <laughs> um, I mean, it, it, but if we're talking about a guy like Keenan Allen yeah he's had four straight years of 150 targets and you're talking about a guy who's had four straight years of 100 catches we've got him slotted for 166 targets and only 106 catches that's probably low given how reliable Keenan Allen is with Justin Herbert taking the step forward he is just in for a massive season. I've got him right now at wide receiver six. I'm only taking him after Calvin Ridley, AJ Brown, Devonte Adams, DeAndre Hopkins, and Stefan Diggs. Yeah, I mean, I mean just at, look, lock it in in round three. Also, massive <laughs> fan of of Keenan Allen. Look at these last four years, uh, catch wise: 102, 97, 104, 100. It, it's it's crazy that a guy that productive, and with the exception of 2016, where he only caught six balls before he got injured and. And and killed Decker right in front of us, Ryan. Week one, uh, he's he's been getting like a hundred plus targets almost every year, his entire year, and almost one fifty plus the past couple of years. Mike Williams has struggled to stay healthy. Hunter Henry no longer there. I mean, Parham probably more of a uh, a red zone guy uh, as far as the tight end. It just seems I mean, like and it's there's gonna... plenty of targets to go around. Parham yeah. doesn't have to touch Keenan Allen's no. share. It just seems like it's going to be Eckler and Keenan Allen catching uh, catching a ton of balls. Moving over to the the fourth round, or did you have another uh, round three one, or is that you're just you're co-signing the Keenan Allen? I co-signed Keenan Allen, and also keep an eye out for Terry McLaurin there. Um, mm-hmm. He's right now going off the board around right around thirty on the major sites. Um, he's a guy who could be in for a really big year, especially with Ryan Fitzpatrick. We know how Ryan Fitzpatrick loves to just yolo the ball all over the field. Terry McLaurin is a better version of Devonte Parker who absolutely feasted last year with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Terry McLaurin is an absolute steal going off the board as the 10th wide receiver at pick 30. That is crazy. Round four. I'm going miles Sanders. This to me again. Oh, it's a Homer pick Sean. He was, he was clearly overdrafted last year you know, at the end of round one top of round two. And I think people Got upset that they drafted him so high and he didn't have that that massive season that they were looking for fantasy wise. So I think that's why he's slipped so far. Again, the Eagles offensive line completely healthy. He's gonna be involved in the pass game. He's had some slight issues with drops, and I do think Gainwell steals some of the third down catches, but they're gonna be running a ton of uh running back screens. They're going out of their way to feature him in the offense. They only kept three running backs, maybe they sign a fourth, but I think Miles Sanders is going to get a ton of looks. He had a bunch of uh, you know seventy plus yard runs last year. He's got some juice. Still a young guy. Round four seems seems way too low for him. Kramer. Yeah, I mean, I agree, and I think you can even get him uh, later than that potentially, which Probably, is yeah. which is pretty. It, it I don't quite understand it. Uh, for me, it's just, let's just go to to Mr. Consistency. 130, 139, 129 targets over the last uh, three years to go with 86, 90, 90 catches, and that's Robert Woods. Certainly, Wait, I gotta know right now. Do I got my screen share on? And Kramer's just like seeing <laughs> the guys I got up, and well, y'all aren't telling me because he's just. You know what it is? It's it's intelligence, joining Next forces, level. synergizing. I mean, again, you can you can get cute here. 
and you can overthink and you can tell yourself reason I've taken Robert Woods every year. It feels like because every year it feels like he's going later than he should. He's in a, the offense is upgraded. The the running game questions, I think only help Robert Woods produce more. And yes, they can absolutely uh, th- this offense can absolutely shoulder uh, a productive Cooper cup, a productive Robert Woods, and even a productive third receiver in there to, to, to go with a Tyler Higby. So I, I love Robert Woods here in the fourth, getting him a lot, uh, even in the high stakes stuff, getting him a lot in the fourth round right now. Yeah. And, and you're on board with Robert Woods as well. Adam, and what what's your biggest concern as a, as a Robert Woods advocate? Is it is it maybe Higby stealing some more Cooper Cup, Stafford not it's being the guy? He's just going to be so popular they by the end of the season that next year he's going to be a first round pick. Oh. <laughs> that's your only concern. I like that. That's my only concern. <laughs> but if we are talking about guys you're targeting in the fourth round, if you went early, like Diggs, Ridley, Keenan Allen, there's a very real possibility. You could come out of your first three rounds with those guys round four. You have an opportunity to pick up James RB one mm. Robinson mm. in the fourth round there. And yeah, you're going to have to reach on him. His ADP is going to be wonky because you know, a lot of people drafted and he wasn't a thing yet. Um, he was a top 15 running back last year on track. I imagine he does it again. Fourth round, great spot to go and get him, especially if you go wide receiver heavy early. And it's such a weird uh, his his eighty. It's it's just strange, right? Because they bring in a guy to replace him. The, that guy goes away, and people are, are are still hesitant to put him back in the place that he produced to the year before. So. Well, Adam, let's uh, let's have you start round five, so it'll it'll seem like Kramer's stealing <laughs> from you instead of vice versa. Well, what do you, what do you got round five? Uh, it's T. Higgins, not even a question. Just yeah. set it and forget it. He's going to be a top fifteen wide receiver this year, and if you're getting a top fifteen wide receiver in a pass happy offense in the fifth round, the guy who's going to be their primary go to in the end zone, you got to lock it down. He's going to, you know, he should probably be going in like round three instead of round five, but. And that's even a little bit of a reach. He's really going in round six. And if your league is smart and worth their salt, he'll be off the board in round five. Yeah. And he, he's a guy I'm sure Brandon Allen will love uh, throwing to when uh, Joe Burrow's leg collapses on the field. Yeah. Where where are your concerns about (laughs) Joe Burrow's knee, Adam? I'm, 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 Uh, I echo Sebastian's I'm towing the company line on that one. Sebastian (laughs) is very nervous about Joe Burrow. For those of y'all who haven't read Sebastian wrote a great injury report last week. We'll be doing. We'll be running another one this week, but he is just very much firing up the warning signs on Joe Burrow and an unsteady knee. Kramer, what do you got? <laughs> who's, who's, who's your fifth rounder? Well, if you've gone, I've done a lot of teams where I, I, I maybe went running back round one, and then I went receiver, receiver, you've receiver. Done a lot of teams, period. Yeah. Period. Uh, so if I'm if I'm in need of another running back before they really start to disappear, I'm. Hundred percent of the time, I'm taking Mike Davis. He's another Ooh. guy with Gus Edwards, with Jamal Williams. I'm very uh, high on from an ownership perspective. But for me, if Tyler Lockett's here in the fifth round, which it's getting harder to find him in the fifth round, I'm taking him every time because again, we're high, same reason you're high on Metcalf in the second. You're high on Lockett. He uh, he gets a ton of volume in that offense. And then I did want to squeak in a tight end take because I do think you guys are right, Waller and Kelsey. Are certainly good targets based on the, the just the, the gap that they have from the rest of the tight ends. But for me, I've been locking in a good amount of Mark Andrews in the fifth, mm. the stack with Lamar in the sixth. And uh, again, I, you know, th- we think the tight ends are actually a bit of a wasteland this year. So you do want to get a good one. Uh, again, I gave you three angles here, but Mark Andrews would be the tight end angle in the fifth. All right. Yeah. I'm cheating the system. I'm sorry, Ryan. Ryan, choose your own fucking adventure. Ryan can't. You can't limit Ryan. I have 112 teams, Sean. That is a lot of. You're gonna let me talk about a couple extra players, right? Oh God, you've earned it, Ryan. You've earned it. Putting the team on your back. Okay, I I still don't get why this guy is kind of just getting uh, getting the cold shoulder. We've seen him have drop issues, but we've seen him play through those drop issues. De- Deontay Johnson mm. in no. the fifth round. No. He has a hundred. <laughs> why don't I you like stay away? I why love don't it. why don't you like Deontay Johnson, Adam? Because Chase Claypool is a better receiver overall. He can do more on the field. He can do more in the short. He can do more in the long. He has better physical tools, and he doesn't drop the ball like third period French. 
I still don't. My I, counter. I, here's my. I'll, I, I'll, I, I'll, I like. I like Claypool too, and you can. And if he's not available, I think either one of these is solid. Here's what I'll say to that. I don't know if uh, Big Ben can throw the ball long. I don't think he's rediscovered his shoulder in the off season. We know his elbow issues from his uh, self care. What I, I just see a guy that had 144 <laughs> targets last year, and I know they drafted Najee Harris. I know they want to run the ball more, but come on, this is a passing league. He's going to get you 130 targets. He's going to catch a, a decent amount of them. I I, I still think he, round five for a guy that's going to give you. Plus one twenty five targets is is a good is a good find. Uh yeah, I'm I, I don't have a lot of him, I'll say that, but I I do recognize I probably need to have more Steelers receivers in general. Cause they, they're gonna rack up and this is full point PPR, uh, assuming that's what you play, even half point PPR, he's just gonna get he's just gonna get a ton of why, catches. Why are the Bengals receivers getting more respect than the Steelers receivers? I don't know. I don't understand Be, that. Because I, the Bengals have a worse defense. Probably. And true. they have quarterbacks who can throw the ball further than ten yards down the field. Let, let's, and let's see. They let's, don't have a running back to go to in the red zone. Like Joe Mixon isn't being thought of like Najee Harris is in the red zone. And we've seen this Bengals offense now in back to back years produce three Hundred target receivers easily with ease with no one at court. Here's what I like about the Steelers receivers in Deontay Johnson and Claypool and and you're right maybe Claypool is is better but I, I stand ADP, strong Sean. ADP is higher <laughs> I I I think Deontay Johnson you have a better shot of of getting him actually in the fifth someone's gonna fall in love with the guy nicknamed Mapletron they run those goddamn bubble screens which is no. infuriating when you're actually watching real football if they don't run them right. But they run them with Big Ben out of the shotgun. The pass is a forward pass. It's one of the easiest PPR. Yeah. It's one of the easiest points to get. So, in but just, just keep this in mind: is it, it is the fifth round, so you're looking for that upside, and the touchdown upside probably isn't going to be there for any of the Steelers receivers not named Claypool because they're going to go to Fryermuth in the red zone. They're going to go to Claypool, and they're going to go to like Harris. Fryermuth. <laughs> and this is the thing, you know, yes, it is PPR, but at the end of the day, one touchdown does the work of six catches, even if you're playing PPR. So you need to have guys who are going to find the end zone, which is why if you're going with the Steelers receiver, you'd rather go Claypool at this range. I'd rather go Higgins because Higgins is more likely to have the high touchdown rate. You know, you got to think about things like that. That's a Whereas fun De- Deontay Johnson definitely has a cap ceiling because he's probably not going to get into the end zone as much. All right, let's do it. Side bet uh, T Higgins, Deontay Johnson, <laughs> just for fantasy pride. I like it. T Higgins all day. Well, I all know day. you're, I know you're on T Higgins. Right. That's why it'll be a uh, six. listen, Sean, yes. Sean, when T Higgins <laughs> has more fantasy points than Deontay Johnson this year in PPR, I I'm a size two X for the T Higgins oh, Jersey. You're sending me. Right. I like that. All right. I like the idea. Of and sending- I will send you the Deontay Johnson Jersey. Never. Yeah, but well, should in some want miracle world he outscore Higgins? I, 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 would not, I would not buy it I, if I didn't buy a Tariq Cohen jersey. I'm not buying any other team's jersey. <laughs> like the kids say, bet. Sean, sixth but, round. Yeah, let's uh, talk about picks wise. Mm. Number one home of free sports betting picks, props, and parlays, helmed by a team of trend watching, data devouring sports fanatics, giving you the who, how, and why behind every prediction. For every game, every day, and every sport, all for free, head over to pixwise.com to make your next bet better. Pixwise backs responsible gambling. If you or someone you know wants help, call 1 800 Gambler. Again, just head over to pixwise.com. Tons of completely free picks. Doesn't get any better than that. Kramer, let's hear about the beautiful game. John, the summer of soccer continues on Paramount Plus. Let me switch this over. I apologize. All right. The summer of soccer continues on Paramount Plus. Stream over 2,000 soccer matches a year from around the world. That's all the heart pounding drama from CBS Sports, including UEFA Champions League, Europa League, Italy, Serie A, Argentina's Primera División, the Brasiliaro, NWSL, the Asian Football Confederation, and the CONCACAF qualifiers featuring the stars from the U.S. and Mexican men's national teams, plus much, much more. It's all the best of the beautiful game with all the beautiful names like Messi, Mbappe, Ronaldo, Rapino, and Pulisic. Be part of the excitement as champions are crowned and history is made. The world's game lives here on Paramount Plus. Visit Paramount Plus to start your free trial and stream every match live. 
Round six, Kramer. Why don't you kick things off? What are you, what are you doing well, in round six? If I'm so fortunate, give me your to do five this. picks for round six. I'll give you my. Fi- if you're in the middle, uh, back end of the round, you <laughs> Lamar Jackson is Ooh. the the pick here. I think the injuries to the receivers. Oh, hot, 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 hot. I, I mean, I, I think you're getting him in the sixth round. Uh, Lamar, look, it, it, the injury to the receivers, the fact that he is probably the most likely guy to rush for a thousand yards and 10 touchdowns. And the fact that I, I think the injuries on that team have only put more on Lamar, especially early yeah. in the season. So again, I, I really like uh, Lamar stacked with Mark Andrews this year. Uh, mm. I don't, you know, we've said this all summer. We, we don't mind a naked Lamar. That's okay too. I, you know, as long, as, he's wearing, as long as he's wearing a mask, the PSA here is like, Hey, there aren't, they're actually, I think much like tight end, there are uh, not as many quarterbacks that you would prefer to be stuck with uh, than you'd think. And if I'm Lamar seems to be consistently the last of the top tier guys that goes, and I've even seen him go after Aaron Rodgers and Russ Wilson recently. And so I would if that happens in your draft to me, even if you're not a huge fan of him, I think you have to go after it just because of the, the, the opportunity he provides your team. Yeah, no, I mean, I've never been like a massive Lamar guy, but the, again, the rushing upside is, is just something you can't ignore. But and this is a reading the draft thing. Cause yeah. if, 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 a, if the pocket guy, like if guys in the Aaron Rodgers, Russ Wilson, Herbert, I don't know, maybe your league likes Tannehill or Stafford or, or Brady. But if any of those guys go and Lamar's still on the board because someone's worried about whatever offseason bullshit, I'd almost just throw out your strategy and take him because well, like, and, and kind of similar to Miles Sanders, where it's it's almost like his ADP is based more off people's reaction or having him and not wanting to have him again than actually anything that's that's changed on the field. What about you, Adam? Round six. What what are you looking at? Uh, Damian Harris is definitely right at the top of my list of targets. I know we talked about him a little bit earlier, but the important thing to remember is Cam Newton's no longer there. Yeah. That means there are now 42 goal line inside the 20 attempts yeah. that are going off the board. Last year, Cam Newton converted on 28% of his attempts touchdowns from inside the 20. Damian Harris will likely see that number go up. He now there are now 42 up for grabs. He only had 19 last year. And I would, and he didn't have one beyond game beyond week 13 last year. There's 137 rushes off the board. Now with cam Newton, we could very well be looking at Damian Harris being a 250 carry guy this year, which makes him a massive value. We'll put him close to the top 10 in rushes. You have to take a guy like that in round six. Yeah, no, uh, that is uh that, it, that definitely makes sense for me. This is a guy we've been hyping up uh all off season for the Broncos, but Javante Williams, it, it's a fun pick there. There's massive upside Melvin Gordon. I, I think it will still be involved, but I mean, the Broncos seem out on Melvin Gordon. I mean, the fact they drafted Javante Williams so high, that's a number one uh, thing. And they Javante, they've kind of even been sleeping on playing him in the preseason, which to me is like, oh yeah, they're, they're waiting to unleash. Javante Williams, yeah. even week one against your Giants, Ryan. It's not the best matchup. For what? Unleashing a new running back. Well, I would say uh, I think the Giants cornerbacks are going to be able to cover the receivers or have a decent job against them. And They're I good think too. I think a guy like Teddy Bridgewater is going to check it down to Javante Williams well, a bunch. Look at Mike Davis last year. That yeah. was Teddy Bridgewater's fine work. So. And, and we could see a very Mike Davis like performance. Out of Javante yeah, I, Williams, uh, the ceilings there. I love this pick. I, I, I've just been all in on Javante love Williams. So fun. Kramer, round seven. Streams crossed. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just gonna steal yours because it was the best one on the board. So we'll, we'll co-sign this one because I have a just an insane amount of Robbie Anderson. <laughs> if you <laughs> have to know when to call. I, honestly, in some of the high stakes stuff, I've taken him as high as the fifth round. So wow. The fact that his ADP still sits in the seventh round is ridiculous to me. I, I like DJ more too, but I like Robbie Anderson more. I believe in the chemistry thing with Darnold. I believe in this offense just going completely unlock this year and, and the defense still not there. So they will have plenty of opportunity uh, to get going in the passing game. Uh, yes. I understand. I'm buying in on Sam Darnold. Yes, I will have Sam Darnold. You mean PJ Walker, Ryan? It, I will have Sam Darnold in at least one of my home <laughs> leagues, just as a, a token. I want, I want that Carolina stack. 
Uh, and, but yeah, Robbie Anderson. I mean, just look what he did last year, and tell me you're not taking him exactly where his ADP says. Got got a little banged up, but the last preseason game, he he took I think like 28 or 38 snaps. So it's, it seems like he's a full go. Maybe more is the number one, no. but still, Robbie Anderson in round seven is just so so juicy. Maybe they've fixed their defense a little bit, and it won't be at. But it's the Joe, you know. That Joe Brady offense, I, I think, is just going to see it. a ton of looks, and and Robbie Anderson is uh, is just a fun guy to have in fantasy. What about you, Adam? Round seven. What are you looking at? Uh, this is where I go, Logan Thomas, right here. Mm. I think Ryan Fitzpatrick really will keep feeding him the ball. Last year and the year before, Mike Gesicki, 85, 89 targets, and that was with Ryan Fitzpatrick not playing a full year in both. And even if Taylor Heineke comes in and is the guy. At some point this year, he's going to look to Logan Thomas too. Logan Thomas looks like he has this like late twenties, early thirties renaissance coming up, where he's just going to be a transcendent PPR monster. And I'm all aboard that. Give me that in the seventh round. That's a guy with top five tight end upside that I'm stealing in a late round. He's definitely better than George Kittle and a bunch of other guys. So love it. We'd and rather and have just that. learning the position A fun fact, you know who he caught his first ever touchdown from at the collegiate or NFL level. That's right. Tyrod Taylor <laughs> bringing it all home. I, I love this too. Cause I feel like he maybe is the end of guys that I truly believe can get enough target share to produce at a, you know, could actually flirt with the idea of getting up in the, the Waller tier. So, well, well, and, and certainly helping that case is Curtis Samuel. He, he's had injuries. I think he's had some uh, COVID stuff, whatever it is. Plus he's got and that also, hamstring. And also with Curtis Samuel, when he was in Carolina first, they never really used him. Right. He didn't have a breakout year until last year yeah. when they moved him all over the field, we're using him in that variety of roles. So we're trusting that he's going back to a coaching staff that didn't know how to use him right is all of a sudden going to have learned how to use him right. Now, maybe it's a possibility, but you can't bank on it. And if there's one thing I can close my eyes and see as well as anything, it's Ryan Fitzpatrick throwing a seam pass to someone <laughs> as he's getting pummeled by like a, an edge blitz. So he doesn't I think mind getting hit. You gotta give it up for Fitzpatrick and he throws it up and Logan Thomas is a big fucking dude. I don't know that Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to get hit much in that NFC East. There's oh. some pretty bad defenses oh. 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 and not a whole lot. All right, move bringing on. Bringing heat off the edge. Move on oh. before we Cock. Yeah. wait till Josh Sweat uh, gets a hold of uh, Ryan <laughs> Fitz magic. He's there's going to be no magic there. Kramer, we're taping this on on September the first, which means for most people rent is due on September first. Mm -hmm. However, with Jalen Hurts in round eight, rent is due every goddamn day. Okay. This guy is playing for his fucking job. And right, paying rent every day, probably not the best way uh, financially. The guy's playing for his job. He's gonna be running a ton. They have RPOs uh, out the wazoo, designed runs out the fucking wazoo. You saw the guy in goal line work. I mean, his fantasy points per game were the, that limited sample size, but it was like three or four games. He, he was like one of the top fantasy guys. You, there are Millie makers who had Jalen hurts and you're getting him in round eight, it, a guy that they, they seem to be not signing on with Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson doesn't want to play in Philadelphia. Thank you. Deshaun Watson. I, I have to know when to come. I just don't see how Jalen hurts. Doesn't ha have a massive fantasy season. Even if you're a hater like Kramer who thinks the Eagles are going to suck. That helps his case. I, I do think it's hard. To, it, this is what I, I would say that um, if Hertz does have a good year, I think you're going to see a tremendous amount of teams winning their leagues with Hertz. Yeah, uh, just because of what it's going to bring you. Assuming that one of the rookies doesn't step up. No, and and maybe one of the rookies does step up, but as far as the rookie quarterbacks that are that really have a huge rushing upside, Justin Fields and uh, Trey Lance, they're not starting yet, and, yeah. and maybe. You know, maybe uh, and when they come in, they're going to be awesome, though, Sean. There's no, <laughs> there's no chance they suck. I, I don't understand this take by everyone else. Like, no, people are just like, they yeah, they the zero percent loves chance Trey Lance Fields or because Mike Shanahan picked him, you, and and that guy doesn't do anything Kyle wrong. Shanahan. Or sorry, you, you, Kyle that's Shanahan. That's an old guy move, Sean. That is. I sound like Colby. All right, what round? Well, Kyle are we Shanahan at? doesn't do anything wrong uh, except lose games. What do you lose got? Lots of games. <laughs> lose, lose lots, lots of, of games. important games. Six win seasons. 
He's the best six win coach in the NFL. Adam, what do you, who's your round eight uh, guy? If he falls there in any of my home drafts, Zach Moss is the guy I'm snapping Ooh. up right then and there. But I play with way too many damn Bills fans, <laughs> and there's no way Ma- he makes it to round eight. Where, any of them. where Zach Moss isn't slipping. <laughs> so the thing with that league is, is it's a 14 team league. So one, it's already just short and tough, and then you add in keepers, and then everybody's a Bills fan. So I there's a chance Josh Allen goes one one this year in that league, and we all just say, okay, know your draft, Adam, know your draft, know your draft. <laughs> I like that. So I, I, yeah, I, I don't know what to think about the bills running back situation. Sean, for me, I'm staying away but in, in I, round eight, Trey sermon. Hmm. And honestly, like either if Kyle if, Shanahan, e- either, either, well, again, running back, <laughs> either running back from San Francisco, I think in the eighth round is a decent value. Um, and, and, and this is one where you're going to want to know your draft because on FFCC, he's going at 68 is his ADP. The other stuff is dragging him down the Yahoo, the fan tracks, the sleepers dragging him down around 80. So know your league, know what platform you're playing on because he is ranked a lot higher and going a lot earlier in some of, on some of these platforms. Well, and that's what, you know, when we're talking to the, the, the drafter on Yahoo, I think a guy like Trey sermon, uh, the, the, the average guy in your drafts going to know who Mostert is might not know who Trey sermon is. And uh, I've been giving out multiple options, so I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna sneak one in real quick. Uh, Ty- Tyler Boyd, Tyler Boyd. Okay. <laughs> Sean, eighth, yes. ninth round. I know you can't help yourself, Ryan. I appreciate right. it. Round nine, we already kind of hit on him on our uh, tout. We're awesome and we're totally right section. I was out on DeAndre Swift before he got injured, but <laughs> now that he's injured, <laughs> I, it just makes Jamal Williams pick. So uh, you're getting a, a, a round nine running back that. Uh, I don't but understand Sean, how he doesn't have a massive they, workload. They have a quarterback who loves to throw the ball down the field and play aggressively. He's oh, not he's, gonna always, he's, gonna, he's he's running from the five yard in. I mean, we saw Jamal Williams taking goal line work from Aaron Jones in that Green Bay offense. I, I didn't I didn't I thought he was gonna have a path to be fantasy relevant before the DeAndre Swift injury, but now you have Dan Campbell saying he's worried that DeAndre Swift injury he didn't get enough reps. I mean, again, I, when Anthony Lynn labeled him an A running back. Again, Anthony Lynn, also super simple guy. When he says yeah. he likes a guy or he's an A guy, he usually do, means it. Do we have any tape of how Jamal Williams did in the uh, jumping over the pad drill in yeah. training camp? Because Anthony Lynn really likes guys that can jump over. He the can pad. probably jump over the pad. He's a he's a fun guy to have on your team. And around nine, I, I get it, it's the Detroit offense. But again, this is just a, a so massive volume. Just play. so everyone's aware, right? Anthony Lynn did produce. Very productive running backs in San Diego slash LA. He's a running backs uh, coach. Uh, I mean, that's so, really what he does best. Yeah, I mean, and I, let's also remember though that he also produced top ten passing offenses mm-hmm. every year he was the mm-hmm. head coach in LA, and that is something everybody always forgets. Now, this is different. He has Jared Goff. This might be the one that breaks <laughs> the camel's back, but he had Philip Rivers, <laughs> Hamon. He had Justin Herbert, Hamon. And I and Philip Rivers wasn't the quarterback he once was those year those Anthony Lynn years. That's a scheme that likes to throw the ball. So if you're late in drafts, Jared Cook or Jared Goff might be a guy you're taking a look at there. And maybe Tyrell Williams now that they cut Brashad Perryman. I'll be honest, I took a look at Jared Goff. No, thank you. <laughs> Kramer. Just for fun, I do have four percent uh, of Brashad Perryman. So that <laughs> That's well, the ter- uh, Tyrell Williams getting cut certainly. Uh, no, no, helps. Rashad Perryman. No, Perryman oh, got sorry, cut. that's right. So um, Perryman, hopefully he lands somewhere. <laughs> Unlikely, but former for Terrell Williams, for, former first round pick. All right, round nine, Kramer. Uh, Corey Davis. This one's easy. Mm. Uh, now, what about Keelan Cole, Adams guy? That, Running with the ones. we don't need. We don't need to go get him in round. Yeah, that, he, he, he's next. He's, he's gonna, next. Corey, he's going to be going last. Corey Davis uh, looks the part. He's going to be. Uh, this this team's gonna have to pass the ball, and I, I do think Zach Wilson is gonna show you show us something. And, and again, PSA: if his odds have dropped at your shop, um, definitely go bet Zach Wilson to win Rookie of the Year because I still think he's gonna have a great opportunity to do that. But yeah, Corey Davis like the angle here, and again, uh, multiple. If you somehow don't have a quarterback yet, hashtag Team Ryan Ryan Tannehill, sneaky rushing mm. upside here, and and we love that team to have a shitty defense and a uh, high powered. Attack maybe so. Uh, those are my two guys. Former former uh, tag team themselves, Corey Davis and Ryan Tano. Uh, what do you got, Adam? Round nine. 
Uh, Brandon cooks. Mm -hmm. Um, Someone's got to catch the ball in Houston. The man has only had two seasons where he's been under a hundred targets. And in both of those, he missed a lot of time with injuries and he's surprisingly consistent other than uh, 2019 and his rookie year. He he's played in all 16 games every year, hundred plus targets. And he's the kind of guy that Tyrod Taylor is going to want to go to that Texans defense is trash. Brandon cooks is going to see work. And the fact that he's Take produ- him in round nine, yeah, he's produced with every quarterback he's played with uh, granted. Some of them have been good. It still speaks to the fact that he's, he must be a decent receiver. Maybe he's just a shitty teammate where he's got a giant, <laughs> giant, giant dong and he scares everyone. Long so they got to get him out cocks. of there. final, uh, final round here. And maybe he ends up not being around a 10 pick, but it, it's kind of chalky Marquez Callaway. I mean, I, I love what I was seeing in the preseason yeah. with him and Jameis. Uh, why not uh, get him involved? Uh, the the pass catching situation is so wonky right now, and 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 Jameis seems to have legit chemistry with Callaway, who could have a pretty good uh, fantasy year. I, I know it's a bit of a long shot here, but Michael Thomas, who knows if he plays with the Saints this year? Um, you know, they got questions at the tight end spot. I, I just don't. Who's who's going to be the leading? Target getter in New Orleans. It, it probably could be Alvin Kamara, but behind him, I, I think it could be Marcus Callaway. And, and round ten, and maybe uh, maybe as we get closer to draft, he he he's, he's a guy you can't get in round ten. But if you're drafting right now, uh, I think he's a great pick. Don't sleep on uh, reserve tight end Tays- Taysom Hill to to lead the team in target, Sean. So <laughs> he's a, he can do a little bit of everything, Ron. Uh, all right. Last round for me. Yep, Michael Pittman, uh, easy one, that, number uh, one receiver. He's even going as a Wentz hater, that's uh, that's something I like. Even got him late. It's pretty late in a, in one of the high stakes best balls recently. I think maybe even twelve round twelve. Um, yeah, just he's he's the number one guy, uh, and you know Ty is probably wasn't going to contribute a lot to begin with. He's now probably done. Um, a lot of question marks across the receiving group there. So he's the one guy. And uh, remind me, Sean, how did Carson Wentz like throwing it to to the receivers in Philly? Was it a question mark? Alshon, he liked a little bit. Uh, he never really had a receiver. Yeah, he clicked that's with what it. Was, it was Zach Ertz. But someone's got to get the targets. I think the offense is going to go through one of the receivers, so he's fun there. And also, if you don't have a tight end yet, you got to take Higby. He's the last guy. So. Oh yeah, Higby. Who I think he should he, be getting a bump. Yeah, he could get a bump there. So Adam, close it out. Round ten. What is your what is your dream selection? If it's PPR, I'm looking at a guy like Naheem Hines. I think he's going to see a lot of the passing down work, Um, even though Jonathan Taylor is slated to have a big part of the role. Um, Definitely that, but real quick, this wouldn't be an Adam fantasy football appearance. If we didn't talk about Keelan Cole for just a hot (laughs) second, you're going to take him in round 12 or later. Okay. You're not taking him in round 10. You don't need him in round 10 yet because the thing to remember is Jamison Crowder is already banged up. (laughs) Yeah. Keelan Cole is going to be starting on the outside more than likely. And he is a guy who can stretch the field and make big plays. You need to go and get him now because once Zach Wilson figures out who the best receiver is on that team, Keelan Cole is going to see the ball early often. And they probably will have him starting off returning punts until Elijah Moore takes the job from him mid season. Oh, I like, I like that. He got it in there, even though it was a top 10 round thing. He figured yeah. it out. Eh. Find a way. He's gonna finish. He's gonna finish so, as a. He's gonna Jet, finish as a as a top. Find as a way. A wide Jets. Keelan Cole wants to be New York's new highlight reel receiver. Hmm. What was their last highlight reel receiver? The Victor Jets. Cruz. Oh, the Jets. Yeah. Keyshawn. Yo, you're right. Yeah. Throw me the uh, damn yeah. ball. You One of the, the greatest. You had the Eric time. Decker and uh, Brandon Marshall. Year yeah, Brandon there Marshall. With Fitzy. Had, that was a fun. That was a fun team. That that Brandon Marshall year was pretty fun. The Jets getting up to ten and six. Adam, hype people up on uh, SGPN's fantasy. What do we got coming? What don't we have coming? We've got it all right now. We've got the rankings. We've got the cheat sheets. We've got the sleepers. We've got the injury reports coming. If you want to stream your tight end, we've got a tight end streaming roadmap for the first month of the season. We're going to have a kicker streaming roadmap. We're going to have a defense streaming roadmap. You want it. We're going to have it. If there's something you want, let us know. We'll find someone to write it. As always, we're going to have our fab worksheet back in the year. Look forward to the cheat sheet as well for DFS plays on Saturday, win money with John Jackson. And we're also going to be paying attention to some sleeper DFS values. 
with our DFS stock watch on Fridays as well during the season. You need it for fantasy. We've got it. Stay tuned. This is awesome. great. Don't, and, don't uh, have to go to any other website. Yep. Da- download the app. Of course, got the rankings cheat sheet links right there on mobile and a new Twitter handle for uh, fantasy at S G P and fantasy. Adam, uh, good luck to you, uh, except in the league that we're in together. And uh, good luck to the Bills week one against the Steelers. Let's fucking go. Football's here. It's here. Let's go. All right. Later, man. Oh, yeah. Tons of fun talking fantasy. Speaking of fantasy, new, uh, my favorite, right? Daily fantasy app, prize picks. That's right. Prize picks. Again, so easy. You get 10x on your money. All you need is to go three for three on one of their. Uh, Three player entries. You just walk it through over under on all the player stats. They got you covered. Obviously, football, college football, which is awesome. NFL, NBA right around the corner, MLB, so much more. Even MMA getting involved. Daily Fantasy Simplified. Make sure you head over to prizepicks.com. Use our promo code SGP. Get a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. Prizepicks.com. Promo code SG. P joining us on the line, the newly dubbed SGPN football doc, Sebastian Fearon. Or should I just call you Dr. Fearon? Doc. How do you uh Fearon <laughs> MD? What do you like to go by? Oh, you know, whatever. I'm usually just in the clinic, Sebastian, but you know, I <laughs> you know, we get Dr. Fearon, whatever you guys prefer. Now uh this is great because you were uh you were listening to the show, you you reached out via email, you said, Hey, I'm I forget how you phrased it, but I remember reading this and go, Oh, this guy sounds like a real doctor, Ryan, which I didn't know we appealed to people with such high yeah, IQ classy gentleman. I know very, uh, very well, uh, high up. And if you're watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast, you would be affirmed in your belief that this is a classy gentleman wearing an all rise, New York Giants shirt. Love this. Sean didn't know. You were being invaded here with Giants uh, fans left and right. Yeah, well, he's he's an actual uh, Giants fan, rocking some gear. Ryan, too ashamed to wear the colors. Uh, it's, it's CFL. He's it's wearing the off a Toronto Argonauts <laughs> uh, shirt for some reason in studio. I like all kinds of football, just like Colby. Now, uh, Sebastian is on Twitter at SGPN Football Doc. So give him a follow on Twitter. Going to be tweeting out injury stuff all season, and and we're writing up some uh, injury reports for mm. us. Before we head into draft season, important to kind of like talk about some guys to avoid. Also, some guys that maybe they're making too much out of their injury. Let's talk. Let's get on the NFC East. Uh, a couple ones. <laughs> There's been a ton of debate on Saquon Barkley. Maybe you're too close to the injury, but is Saquon Barkley, as Ryan says, going to be 100% week one? Gonna have 20 plus carries as a medical professional? Do you see any issues with Saquon? Yeah, no, I mean, so I appreciate the introduction, by the way. Yeah, I know. Been listening to you guys for a little while. I think it was right around when uh, you guys were talking about Dax injury. I was yeah. driving home and I was like, I think these guys could use a little bit of help on that lap. <laughs> you guys were trying to locate exactly what yes. that was, but uh, didn't know no, what the I, muscle you know, was called. Yeah, it was a little bit tough to hear as a medical professional, but not <laughs> uh, happy to help. But uh, as far as Saquon, yeah. So, you know, being a Giants fan, I try to take the biases aside, but. I have good expectations for Saquon this year. Not great. Mm. So, you know, everyone tries to do that comparison to Adrian Peterson. It's not really an example. It's an outlier. I think we have to kind of bring ourselves back to earth here. He's absolutely a freak athlete. Don't get me wrong. All on the Barkley train. But as far as week one goes, I think all indications point to them easing him in. And I think it's a smart call. Honestly, they're being conservative with him. Uh, As of right now, he's not taking any hits in practice yet. So they're still trying to be very conservative with him. That being said, like I said, not to put it as an example, but Adrian Peterson in his year in 2012, <laughs> he didn't take any hits in practice before the season. Just throwing it out well, there. All right. All yeah. right. That's a nice little uh, nugget there. It's true. As a doctor, that felt like more of a Giants fan nugget than a doctor nugget. It was a real nice Jekyll and Hyde situation. <laughs> Speaking of doctors, going from the objective mm. stance to the let me throw all of that out. A little, little stand in there. It's happened before. What about uh, <laughs> and you mentioned uh, us describing the DAC injury? You felt the need to reach out. What about this DAC injury? And again, complete medical layman, but that injury was so bad. 
And then now the the lat strain. Uh, uh, Does he need me. Tommy John yet? Like, what's yeah, going on? I mean, the fact that they were talking to baseball uh, doctors <laughs> to me was a red flag. He's he's limited. He also hasn't really seen live action. What what about Dak? Is he really just going to be a hundred percent? And I'm a I'm I'm a biased fan making too much out of this. Yeah, no, I mean this one's tough because we we all saw that gruesome injury, you know, last season with his ankle. So I think it does breed a lot of optimism as far as you know. We want, he's a likable guy for a lot of people, so we want to see him do well. But there's a lot of red flags for me on this one. I mean, um, for them to come out and say that they didn't think the ankle was related to the shoulder issue, I don't really buy that at all. Uh, so the biggest reason why these lat injuries happen is because there is uh, what's be called a great increase in stress on the muscle. So basically what that means is this guy's been throwing, uh, he's a quarterback his whole life, right? But he has that terrible injury. He's out since week five of last year. He can't throw at his normal volume. So he tries to come back to training camp and they try to ramp him up. And he even says, you know, he didn't warm up before he started throwing. And that's when that kind of thing happens. The muscle wasn't ready for it. And it kind of, it's damaged now. So I think as far as week one goes, you know, I think it's smart for them not to play him, but he has not gotten any live reps and you're going to expect this man to come out against the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense and just light it up. I, uh, I can't buy that. I can't <laughs> buy that one bit. I like it. Cause it's, it's all he, he, his analysis is all doctor related towards the end. And then it's like, nah, Dex's not can, doing that. Can I, can I tell you, I had, yeah. a, I had a dream uh, in the past couple nights about Dak. Well, oh, yeah. did he get you a piece of luggage? What uh, happened? No, he did not get me a p- He didn't, he didn't gift me. I didn't gift him, <laughs> uh, but, but, but he was injured in that first game. Oh wow. Uh, that is a scary pass oh. rush. And if they, they put him out here and, the, and he's not ready, uh, you know, we only uh, we only can pray for the best. Well, again, we'll set the vigil up if he gets. Uh, I still have the candle again. from last year. Yeah, so. getting, getting ready for deck. Fantasy football season. Who's a guy that people? And again, we hit on deck. We hit on Saquon. But is there is there another guy top of mind or or a big name or or just in general? And I know you've put out some nice lists here, uh, but uh, that people are are kind of ignoring or brushing aside the injury issues either something that happened in preseason or something they're coming in with. Who's, who's a red flag guy that uh, you think people should avoid drafting? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, even staying in the NFC East, we still have a couple. Um, I will hit on one. So, cause we have the Kenny Galladay one, which I've uh, kind of reported on a little bit, you know, that's a hamstring issue, which is concerning given his history and given his position yeah. as far as he's at his best, a deep play wide receiver. So you need your hamstring to be able to sprint down the field and you need it to jump balls. And that's what he specializes in. So that was concerning, but I will say he's back at practice. Mm-hmm. An NFC East receiver who's not back at practice yet is uh, Curtis Samuel. So I think as of today, he did warm ups, he did stretches, and then he went right to the training or trainers on the side there. So that's not a good sign as far as you know. You got Galladay back at practice. Um, you got a couple of these other guys leaving Marquise Brown for the Ravens back at practice, but. Samuel not being back after dealing with a groin and COVID. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely concerning for me. And he's, he's new to the offense. I mean, he's a new piece coming in. They expected him to be in that wide receiver two next to McLaurin. And, you know, he's still not out there. So I think that one is flying a little bit under the radar and should be a bit more concerning than people are thinking. Yeah. And and we kind of hit on it earlier in the episode, but could be good for McLaurin could be good. Even for Logan Thomas, Diami Brown, Diami Brown, the rookie. That's kind of interesting. What about the other side? Is there a player that people aren't drafting because of injury issues or they think they're injury prone, but you're looking at it and you're going, you know what? I actually, I think this guy's going to be good. I, I think he's going to be healthy. Is there someone that you feel they're, they're making too much uh, of their injury? Maybe it's even me with some of the uh, injury angles I've taken. Is there, is there someone, <laughs> you know, predicting Christian McCaffrey will get injured and you have to draft Chuba Hubbard who, again, they got rid of their other running back. He's number two on the depth chart. Chuba. Uh, but uh, who, I do uh, like the two play. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. But, uh, but, uh you know, if you would ask me this question a couple of days ago, I would have given an answer. You probably wouldn't have liked, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with it for now, but now it's got a little more question marks, but I think Carson Wentz is one of the injuries that, mm. you know, 
originally I was pretty optimistic because he really got a barring, you know, the injury itself, but he really kind of got best case scenario here. So they kind of came in and when they gave that kind of long bit wide timetable, yeah, of like five, five to, 12, to 12, weeks. 12 weeks. Yeah. That sounded crazy. So the reason for that is basically what he was getting was uh, he needed to remove a small piece of bone. And so your timetable, you don't really know until you get in there. So what happened was that when they removed the bone, it was a small fragment and there was no ligaments or muscles attached to it. That's the biggest thing there. So that's, that's huge because if you're looking at any type of muscle ligament attached, even a bigger bone taken out, that's close to three months rehab. That's kind of the reason why he's on this week one path. And, you know, according to the surgeons, there's not little to no re-injury risk there. I mean, it's really just waiting for that to heal. And then it's as much as he can tolerate. Mm. Now, that being said, this whole COVID stint, I mean, I think it was going to be tough for him chemistry wise coming into this new off uh, offense, but him going on this COVID list for at least five days, that raises my concern a little bit more before the COVID I was, you know, I was cool with, you know, I think that if you're a Wentz believer and as a Giants fan, I definitely am not, (laughs) but if you were, then I would be okay with you drafting him. But with this COVID new offense and their schedule at the start might be a guy you might want to look to pick up midway through the season, but that first five games is going to be tough for him. Yeah. And, and less, less even Carson Wentz's injury situation, but the left tackle situation, I mean, they had their, the, you know, Costanzo, he retired, Eric Fisher uh, just tested positive for COVID. So he's going to be sitting for what is it like 10 days? I, I, it seems like they're going to be starting like a third string left tackle week one uh, against the Seahawks. I think that almost is the thing, the, the piece of the Carson Wentz formula that, that no one's talking about enough is, is their offensive line. It used to be an offense, an awesome line. Quentin Nelson missed some time. He's had some injury issues. He's he had his own foot thing. He was on the COVID list. So the, their offensive line is really in trouble. Jim Ursay must just be getting so <laughs> the sweats every time he hears about a positive test. Oh, oh. shit. Oh, it wasn't me. Cool. All right. Sweet. They also, uh, I think, uh, well, I don't know if he was a backup or starter, but left tackle Sam Tevy. Yeah, that's, that's what uh, that was the other one I was missing. So Costanzo retires Fisher uh, on the COVID list. Uh, Tevi uh, Achilles tear it was right, and they're just uh, uh, they're just dropping like flies. No, yeah. So Tevi was ACL. Uh, ACL. Fisher's coming back from Achilles tear, so he probably wouldn't have been ready week one anyway. Yeah, that's what it was. Sean, <laughs> that's what we call a cluster injury. <laughs> which mm, Carson, you know, Carson Wentz, not exactly the a Carson quor- curse. A quarterback you want uh, with a shaky blind side, probably not the best. No, best situation. They use a guy who needs a really good offensive line, like they had. In 2017, uh, when they won the, I Super mean, just Bowl. look what happened when he felt the uh, the Eagles organization didn't have his back anymore. Yeah, he mm, is. Wah, he is, wah. He is you guys were mean to me. To backside pressure. <laughs> All right, Sebastian. Before we let you go, what is uh, what's one more injury piece news? Whatever. One more injury information that uh, drafters have to know. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Let's go with. I want to talk about Joe Burrow a little bit. Oh uh, yeah, that was a great one. Yeah. You know, this is, so him and Saquon basically have the same injury. It's an ACL MCL. And you know, they said other structural issues that basically means meniscus. So they're commonly issued in what's known as like a, a terrible triad because they're all connected. But basically what that is, they all stabilize the knee. They're very important without it. You can't run, you can't cut, you can't do those type of things. So Burrow, um, you know, as much as gets talking about Saquon, Saquon was hurt. Uh, he's had at least two more months, three more months of rehab than Burrow has. So he was, you know, Burrow was hurt. Uh, what December, was that? right? 11, 12, yeah. 22. Yeah. Yeah. So Mid November. Nine and a half months of rehab from a very serious injury. Uh, but even take away the physical part, like the psychological aspect of him, he's been quoted to be saying he's not feeling completely comfortable. And to be honest, why should he? Yeah. That offensive line is terrible. <laughs> yeah. And they've done nothing to improve it. Like, that's great that they got a shiny new toy and Jamar Chase for him. But that wasn't really the problem. It was really the offensive line. So, I mean, but from a rehab standpoint, from a mental standpoint, you know, I just kind of feel bad for the guy because he definitely has the potential. But. Well, and, I mean, and, they're, they're not helping them. And, when and I was rehabbing my shoulder, they used to always <laughs> say that the easy part was the physical rehab. Yeah. It's the mental rehab, well, especially for the quarterback position. You've heard Brady talk about it. Who again, um, you know, his interesting uh, 
family relationships aside is a mentally <laughs> strong individual. And he even yeah. said it took a lot to get confidence in that knee and, and to feel like you're going to plant or when you have pressure around the pocket, not to like get jittery. I think Burrow is really going to struggle because of that. And, I, and again, the fantasy community does seem to be just sweeping that aside of, Hey, they're going to be fine. And maybe the same person that tells you that Barkley is going to like, you know, oh, you know, his, you know, his injury was really serious. There were two three letter acronyms that got torn. Yes. But th- that's <laughs> that same person is like, you know what? I love all three of the receivers for the Bengals. Let's fucking and, and, go. And maybe it's such garbage time. It doesn't matter, but I'm still, I just think the guy's going to have trouble throwing the ball and trusting his yeah. leg. And the, the biggest point here is that Barkley, the big difference is when the injury happened, Barkley was September and Burroughs was months later towards the, you know, towards the end of the season, typical Bengals organization move, right? You finally get something nice and you don't treat it. You don't treat it nice. <laughs> they, they even traded away a lineman to the giants who I, you know, as far as I'm concerned, they traded no, away their best lineman to the giants. Well, so. uh, giants O line doesn't have any issues. They're, they're completely fine. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right. Uh, Sebastian, before we let you go, any, uh, any predictions for the NFL season team? You like fantasy, you like best bet throw, give a, you know, I know you're a doctor, uh, but uh, what what do you like gambling wise uh, this year going into 2021? No, absolutely. Yeah, I just got my future bets in. Uh, I really like. Uh, I'm on the Steelers. You know, I uh, maybe a little bit of a homer. I spent three years in Pittsburgh doing my schooling up there, so I just think that they're getting slept on a lot. When you look at these injuries that's happened to the Ravens, they're not a bad team. They're still going to be a pretty good team, but they're they're going to be missing a lot of key pieces there. I think to bet on Tomlin to not have his first winning season ever is just a dumb bet. And I'm getting plus <laughs> money on that. I'm taking that all day. Uh, I think the Seahawks coming out of the NFC West uh, are, I mean, love it. They, I think they have the least question marks as far as you look at the Rams, you look at the Niners. I mean, these guys, like, they got a lot of new pieces coming in, and you got, you know, dangerous. I'm going to trust him, and he's got the best odds. I don't think the Cardinals have a shot. Uh, so those are kind of my two that I really like. And then, you know, I got to end it with the, uh, you're giving me four to one odds <laughs> on the New York football giants. Are Ryan, you kidding me? Right. Cut the oh, feed. Oh, cut the feed. Oh, right. <laughs> All right. Well, oh. appreciate, appreciate you calling in a uh, uh, great appearance with the exception of that last <laughs> thing you said there at the end, make sure you give uh Sebastian a follow Hell at yeah. SGPN football doc uh, and uh, check out all his, uh, his work over at sports gambling podcast.com. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. Make sure you get your entry in for your chance to win $100,000 NFL week one exclusively on the SGPN app for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green and he is Ryan one more time. All right. Kramer. Let's